So, first uh, happy uh, 65th uh, birthday demos. It has uh, been a pleasure uh, knowing you for all these years. And uh, you know, as I get older, uh, my ima I can't separate reality from imagination. But I, rem I think that we first met, I, I remember definitely meeting in 84, where we came for dinner at yours and Barbara's place. You were uh, somewhere near Cambridge. 82, okay, and uh, <laughs> and uh, you, yeah, and uh, and and uh, at that time, <laughs> <laughs> and at that time, and at that time, Demos was in Alpha Tech, and I was wondering what on earth is Demos doing in Alpha Tech, <laughs> okay, because I, he was a strong proponent of uh, absolutely rigorous. Uh, fundamental uh, research and so on. And over the years, uh, I think that's what he stood for. So, and all his students have acquired all those genes, so that we can clearly see. So, pleasure, Demos, and wish you the very best. Okay, so Demos has done, I mean, uh, many, many fundamental contributions. And, uh, you know, I just copied here some things which are somewhat relevant to what I'm going to talk about. So, basically, everything that I'm going to say, in some sense, is touched upon that a market-based approach, optimal resource, uh, networks, uh, distributed estimation, bandits. I'm going to say something about all of these things. Uh, wireless communication, uh, decentralized routing, uh, d information structures, et cetera, et cetera, real time. So my talk is somewhat covering these sorts of areas. Okay, so, uh, so I'm going to talk of uh, the work of uh, my student, uh, uh, Rahul uh, Singh, uh, who is now, uh, my first PhD from a &M, by the way, who is now post at uh, MIT. And uh, uh, at uh, a and I have been working with uh, Le Che, who is a power systems person, and I uh, have been uh, foolishly venturing where angels fear to tread, which we will find out in a second. Okay, so two problems I am going to talk about. One is uh, optimal scheduling of uh, unreliable networks with end-to-end -end deadlines. So multi-hop networks with end-to-end -end deadlines, okay? And that's a fundamentally distributed problem because you have to make decisions here uh, and they're somehow related to decisions further down because you're interested in the end-to-end -end experience. Okay, and optimal pricing of scheduling, pricing and scheduling of generators and roads. And both are uh, stochastic uh, distributed control problems. Uh, both have a solution based on price and uh, they're from the thesis of uh, Rahul. Okay, so let me first uh, talk about multi-hop uh, networks. So here's a flow, okay, and there's another flow. They could even be multi-path flows, uh, multiple flows, and uh, every flow has an end-to-end -end deadline, okay? So that means that I'm only going to give you credit for packets that make it within that time. Everything else does not count to throughput, okay? So that's what I call timely throughput. This is the packet delivery meeting and hard end-to-end -end deadlines. Now what about the constraints on the network? So here is node i. I'll assume that node i has an average power constraint, which is a very uh, strange word, but information theorists use it. Power itself is average, but talk of average power, <laughs> okay? Standard construct in information theory. And uh, I'm going to, you can think of it at the power level, but I'll uh, abstract it down to a packet level. I'll suppose that multi-packet transmissions are allowed. Each transmission takes, takes one watt, so that the average number of packets that can be simultaneously transmitted by node i at time t is less than or equal to ci. So you can think of ci as a power or average number of packets that you can simultaneously transmit. Think of it that way. Now, the, the uh, links are unreliable, okay? So when this packet gets transmitted, it may or may not make it there, and the probability that it make it is Pij. By the way, can you hear me in the back? Can you speak up? Okay, uh, no, I can't. <laughs> but I will. <laughs> I will. I will. Uh, is this better? Yes. Okay, good. All right. <laughs> okay, so so the probability of a uh, packet being successful is Pij. All right, and we're not going to assume. Uh, no interference, okay? These are all directional transmissions, which by the way, uh, has become important of late. Uh, I'm not sure Rajiv mentioned this, but exactly two weeks ago, 
the FCC opened up 10.85 gigahertz of spectrum in the 24 plus gigahertz uh, band, millimeter wave, 3.85 licensed, 10 gigahertz unlicensed, and they're going to open up 18 more gigahertz unlicensed. So there could be a revolution in this uh, millimeter uh, wave uh, domain, uh, but these, these have to be directional links, okay? Uh, even in the urban canyons of New York, non-line of sight, uh, you're getting 200 uh, meters uh, propagation. Uh, at cell edge, they talk of 10 megabit per second, uh, but the coherence times are very small. So there are many challenges in making this work, but it's going to be directional antennas, which are unreliable, okay? All right, now what is the challenge of distributed scheduling? So let us suppose that there's a node here which has to make a decision whether to tack, uh, send a packet to flow one or flow two. It can only send one packet, okay? Now if it sends flow one, flow one is uh, congested uh, downstream, so there's no point in transmitting it. It's going to get stuck. It's not going to make it before its deadline. On the other hand, if it sends four, flow two, there's no congestion, so that's good. So in that sense, if it has to make a decision, it's good to know what traffic is upstream. Similarly, you could even argue it's good to know what tra traffic is uh, upstream because if a, another packet is coming with a loser deadline, maybe I should give this one up and send that. So the point is, this, uh, in this system, knowing network state looks very important, okay? To make an optimal decision, do we need network state, okay? So does it require complete knowledge? Now, if it does, then you have a major problem because the whole point, if you want to get network state instantaneously, then you need zero delay, but the purpose of getting network state is to get low delay. So you have a chicken and a horse, uh, egg uh, situation. So obtaining network state itself requires solving an end-to-end -end delay problem. And by the way, even if you could obtain the network state, doing dynamic programming on that is hopeless. Uh, the state space is uh, exponentially large, okay? So it's a hopeless problem. So is optimal scheduling of this distributed system difficult? In fact, there's a fundamental problem in distributed systems, right? Because you don't have information about everything, but optimal decision depends on information. Okay, so Rahul found a loophole, which I'll tell you about. So what we, I'm, I'm going to look at uh, examining the boundary of the, Pare the Pareto frontier by maximizing a weighted sum of flows. So RF is the timely throughput of flow F, alpha F is some weight, and let's consider some weighted linear combination, and that's what I want to maximize, and I'm going to show you how to achieve that, okay? Remember this alpha f, this comes in useful. It's the weight of the fth flow, how to schedule the network. Solution is actually uh, the following. You can pose this as a long-term average cost problem where you want to maximize the weighted throughput. Throughput itself is measured as a long, is a, is a long-term average, subject to another long-term average constraint on the number of simultaneously transmittable packets. So adjoin that to this. So you be standard way of way you, uh, the way you do uh, average cost constraints, adjoin it. And now this thing completely decouples on a packet by packet basis. So instead of looking at each time what's happening and then taking the average, look at all the packets that were transmitted by this time and take an average over the packets. It's the same thing, okay? So you can actually deco decompose it according to packets. I mean, there are some technical assumptions. We're assuming that bounded number of packets arrive in time, deadlines are bounded, et cetera, but these are all minor things. But you can decompose completely on a packet by packet basis. Now what does that mean? So now each packet therefore faces the following problem. It has to uh, optimize this objective. It gets alpha f dollars if it reaches its destination on time, but it has to pay lambda i dollars to node i every time it requests transmission, okay? So here's this balancing game. Should I pay this toll and ask for a, this unreliable transmission in the hope that if I reach my destination, I'll get alpha f dollars, so just, I don't take that now. So there's node i, there's a packet. The packet state actually is very simple. It is simply where it is and how much time to live. That's the only thing the packet cares about. It doesn't care about the rest of the network, okay? So it is saying, here's a link, PIJ, should I pay lambda i? And if I ever get to my destination, then I'll collect alpha f. And that's a very simple dynamic programming problem. Uh, either pay or don't pay. If you don't pay, you just, your clock ticks down. If you pay, you may 
go to J or you may not, and then you pay lambda. Uh, and that's a simple dynamic programming problem. Its state space is only uh, V delta. Okay, so this can be stored, solved offline and stored. Okay, so the optimal solution now completely decouples. Each packet simply makes its own decisions when to be transmitted or not. And it does not depend on the state of other nodes, the state of other flows, even other packets within its own flow or anything. So the point is, under average power constraints, there's full decoupling, okay? Which I didn't know, okay? All right. So if the price, lambda i, yeah. So you're assuming there's no capacity constraints over there? No, average. So this is the beautiful thing about average. The thing is that if there is local congestion, fine, we will pay, uh, uh, We'll exceed the power, but we'll compensate later because it's average. Okay? So I'll comment on that in a second. Now, how to obtain this price? If the price is too low, if the node sets the price too low, too many packets will ask to be transmitted, and it'll exceed its average power constraint. And the price is too high, too few will ask. So that simply suggests a tautonomy, which is you look at the power consumed, uh, compare it to the thing, and adjust the prices. Okay? But there's one small technical aspect. Even if the price is exactly right, we may need to do a little randomization just to use up the exact power. <laughs> I mean, supposing I'm allowed to use 2.3 watts, and if, we, if I don't transmit, it's 2 watts. If I do transmit, it's 3 watts, and I may need to do a little randomization. So that little element is there. Now, so you can look at the dual of this problem, and uh, the max is attained by the single packet transportation problem, and the dual problem is that, and there is no duality gap because you can reduce all these to linear program over randomized measures and so on, okay? All right, so uh, suppose lambda star is the price vector, and pi lambda star, now, now I have to state this formally, when is it exactly correct? Uh, suppose lambda star is a price vector, pi lambda star is the optimal randomized policy for each uh, single packet flow problem. And supposing at every node, either I, I mean, basically I have complementary slackness. Either uh, I have equality constraint or price zero. Okay, so this is just a complementary slackness. Uh, then everything is optimal, okay, the standard uh, result. So now, because I know the structure of the solution for each flow, instead of trying to separately solve them and seeing what, what should I randomize to use the best uh, to make the best use of the power, should I use this flow or this flow, or one with this deadline or that deadline? Just put them all into the same bag. You're just solving many problems at the same time, but they're decoupled. <laughs> so you can comp just create one uh, thing with state action probabilities, just lump all of them together, and it's a very tractable linear program of low complexity, this many variables and this many constraint, and being a linear program, it is uh, much uh, very, easy to do and definitely better than the exponential complexity, okay? <clears throat> okay, so now, so what did I, so I said that, so the interesting result is that this is exactly optimal for the distributed problem. There's no compromise, okay? Because of average power constraint. Now supposing, now I go back to, I consider the problem where I have a peak power constraint. <clears throat> that is, I'm never allowed to transmit more than 10 packets at any given time. Then what should I do? So then we connect with another problem of, in which Demos has worked on, which is the bandit problem. So suppose node I can only transmit CI packets concurrently at most, okay, not on average. Then this is like the Bittles uh, the bandit problem because you know that if you can pull multiple arms simultaneously, that's an intractable problem. But Whittle has shown that if you relax it, so that on average you can pull 10 arms simultaneously, then under some indexability conditions and so on, then you can solve that optimally. And also that's near optimal as the number of arms increases, right? So same thing applies here, exactly the same thing. This policy is approximately one over square root n optimal as the capacity is scaled up. So basically, uh, it gives you, now, now, the, now the decisions are not independent because we're doing truncation. So previously under average they were independent, but here they're not. So now the coupling does come, okay? Anyway, so the point, uh, by the way, this is a very simple theory that you can actually calculate things, okay? So this is just to show you that you can put this in textbooks, okay? It's a textbook example, you can do calculations. 
and uh, you can do computations. We've compared it with things like uh, a back pressure with earliest deadline first and so on. And I want to make a comment about back pressure. So back pressure is a fluid based uh, approach and the fluid based approach is good for throughput. But unless you take variances into account, you cannot an handle delay. So what we are doing is a stochastic uh, Lagrangian. Okay, so it is it is appropriate, I believe, for delay. So back pressure is not. Okay, I mean, if it is good, it's a coincidence, but it's really the difference between law of large numbers and central limit theorem. So you can compare it and, and so on and so forth. Okay, so now I've not considered things here: the contention, interference, coding, and so on. In some technologies, that may not be relevant, whatever. But there are other issues that. Uh, one could think of from a research uh, point of view. And I was going to mention this uh, spectrum opportunity. Uh, so this was uh, announced just on July 14th. And I think actually it's a very liberal policy decision of the FCC in this case because so much of unlicensed is being given off. You know, and uh, uh, very next day, the NSF also had an advanced wireless initiative. They announced $400 million of research. $50 million to build four medium scale city test pits. So the cities are going to be competing. And then they're going to have some $350 of funny money, yeah, add-ons to your proposals and so on, for doing experimentations on these test pits. So this is really going to take off, uh, hopefully, in a, in a large way. Okay, now I'm going to wade into this problem of uh, power systems and economics and so on. And I have this feeling that either I'm doing something wrong or I've got a lot of assumptions, or I'm threading some needle or something, but we'll find out, okay? Okay, so let's think of this independent system operator problem in a static context. Let's say you have a generator and a load, and in between you have sitting this entity called an independent system operator. Now this independent system operator has to balance uh, supply and demand. Basically you can store energy, the supply has to equal demand at every given point in time, essentially. and uh, now, one way to solve this problem is generators and loads each bid their supply and demand curves. So generator says you pay the price higher, I'll produce more. Uh, load says price lower, I'll demand more. And then the ISO, if they both bid their curves, the ISO will intersect both of them, find the right price, and that's optimal in many, many senses, okay, under appropriate assumptions and so on. Okay, so this is the way you'd solve the static problem. Now, the motivation, the motivation is to, uh, re, uh, so I'm interested in this problem of how to increase uh, utilization of renewables, okay? So, so in the age of renewables, uh, I mean, uh, in the traditional grid, uh, demand is king. You can turn your air conditioner on and off any time, and the uh, generation keeps up with your demand, okay? And they can do that because these are controllable generations, okay? But on the other hand, if you're going to use renewables, they are stochastic, you can't ramp them up or down, so you, demand cannot be king. So we we'll want to reverse the paradigm and we want to make demand adapt to supply. And that will require communication of prices and uh, states and all kinds of things, smart grid, etc. But the basic idea is you want to match demand to generation. So that's called demand response, and then you have renewables. Okay, so Think of the following context. Let us say you have a new, you have many sources of generation, right? A nuclear power plant. The nuclear power plants, basically, you can't ramp them up or down. They just keep generating power. So power, cost of power may even become negative at night if you have too many nuclear power plants like in France, you know? So I think Switzerland, I think France pays Switzerland to buy, its, to take its power, pumps water up the Alps and sells the power to Germany in the daytime. So that's nuclear power. Uh, coal plants, you have a decision to make. Should you, should you ramp it up at that point or ramp it up later? When should you turn it on or off? There are decisions you can make or other plants, peaking plants and so on. Uh, wind farms, it's <laughs> stochastic. Okay? Uh, hydro also is stochastic. So that's on the generation side. On the load side, uh, let us say that, uh, you know, the biggest battery is your home. If I if I cool my home by one degree, that's a lot of thermal energy, right? And it stays there for a while. So, so if I'm thinking of it as an energy, buying energy, I can decide to buy energy in the morning and initially thermally store it in my home, or I can buy it in the afternoon or whatever. So there are many options for, uh, for uh, 
when to purchase energy. Uh, commercial loads also may have different options. Industrial loads may have different options. And storage services. I'm not sure whether you need storage services, but because your homes are already huge storage. But if you do, let's say you have a, actually you may, if you have an EV a charging station, the peak load to charge many cars is very high. So you may want a local battery. But then the question is, should you buy in the morning, sell in the afternoon, or sell in the morning, buy in the afternoon, whatever. There are many, many options. OK, so you have all these agents, OK? And all of them have dynamic constraints, like ramping, like thermal inertia, all these things. Lots of uncertainty in wind, in the temperature of a city, uh, water flow, et cetera. And all these choices have huge costs and benefits. The amount of money we're talking about is uh, huge. Uh, so when our agents are making decisions, if we don't make the right decisions, there's a potentially huge costs involved. <clears throat> and then you have this ISO in the middle. This ISO has to, at all times, make supply equal to demand, okay, uniformly over time. And the problem I'm going to consider, and I have a specific context, I'm trying to maximize social welfare, okay? What is social welfare? It's the sum of the utilities of everybody, okay? So what is utility? So when, I, when you give me power and my house cools, there's a certain benefit, that's my utility. The amount of benefit of the power is my utility. Uh, the amount of uh, the benefit of the power to a company is its utility. On the other hand, for a coal plant, the cost, you have a cost of power production, so you have a negative utility. And the social welfare is the total benefit of the power minus the total cost of its production. That's social welfare, and we're talking of maximizing that. So it has to decide how much should be generated at each point in time and balance. And, how sh and the question is, how do we arrive at a social welfare optimal solution? How should they gener generators and loads bid and so on? OK, so that's the context, OK? And I'll show you some small <laughs> abstractions of that to see what kind of problems we come up with. OK. so. Let's not talk of the formulation in terms that the most will appreciate. So there is a stochastic dynamic system. Uh, let us say this is generator one. It's got an uncertainty W1, X is state, U is its input. And there may be some constraints. And it has a utility function, OK? Uh, generator two may also have some other states and utility functions. Load also may have its own states, utility functions, constraints, and so on. Uh, and then you may have a prosumers, a storage, et cetera, et cetera. And then in the middle, you have this ISO. This ISO wants to maximize social welfare, which is the sum of everybody's utility functions. Okay? But it has to maintain balance at all times. Okay? And it has to assign who produces or who consumes how much at every given time. But the challenge is it should do this without knowing anything, essentially, without knowing the states of the agents. So I don't want to tell the ISO the temperature of my home. The coal plant may not want to reveal its uh, whatever its uh, <laughs> competitive advantage. Uh, they don't release their model. Certainly, the ISO doesn't care or know, and you don't want to reveal what the dynamic model is. And uh, utilities, I'm not going to tell it what my utility function is, uh, and so on. So without knowing any of these things, it has to somehow achieve this, OK? How? OK. I'm going to go through a graded series of examples. So let's start with, uh, let's assume that they're all, all these uh, people are deterministic dynamical systems, no stochastics, OK? So there's no Ws, OK? And we want to maximize this, OK? There's no expectation. OK, now the solution is very simple. You take the Lagrangian dual. OK, oops, sorry. This is the dual, Lagrangian dual. You take your uh, objective, take the constraints, and then you can decouple it. Surprise decouples everybody. But now, notice that because people are making, you know, these are dynamical systems. I think uh, Praveen can, uh, knows more about this. But I think in the current market, there is no way to bid. You know, there's no way to say, I'm going to Buy, if I buy 10 watts now, then I'll buy 5 in the afternoon. Whereas if, you, if I bid 3 now, I'll buy 17 in the afternoon. There's no way to make complicated bids of that sort. But those are needed if you're going to make decisions over time. Okay? 
So, we need a richer language I think for bids. Okay? So, so, in this particular case, uh, the ISO will need to announce the entire sequence of prices from now till the end for all future times and then the agents uh, for each uh, and then the agents will choose will bid their uh, sequence of generations or consumptions uh, which maximize their utility. So, so the utility of the power minus the cost okay, the, uh, the joint thing. So, so, okay, so now the question is how should the ISO choose this price sequence. So, it needs to solve this dual problem. So, you, it can use a subgradient uh, iteration and the subgradient is just the excess consumption function. So, in other words, if you are consuming too much, increase the price, consuming too little, decrease the price and that gives a simple price uh, iteration and we will talk about this in a second. Actually, Praveen gave me a beautiful counter example and corrected something that I was saying. So, convergence after weighted averaging and convexity and convex compactness and convexity assumptions. Okay, so convergence. So, here is a very nice example. Okay. So, this is modified version of Praveen's. Okay. You had a two stage, I am doing a one stage example. Think of the following example. So, let us say you have a generator whose uh, generations are negative, okay. consumptions are positive in my terminology. So, this is the cost of power, two fifth dollar per watt. Okay. That is the cost, that is the generator, and it can make, make uh, generate up to one watt. Uh, by the way, I am not sure this is the right way to handle it or not, but I can even throw in a carbon tax just to show you the possibilities. Okay? So, let us suppose that this generator also has to pay a carbon tax. Okay? Uh, the load, let us say this is the benefit of the load of power consumed. It can consume up to 2 watts and this is its benefit. Then the social welfare problem is this plus this, which is that, subject to these constraints plus balance. Okay? Now, the optimal solution is uh, price half and the optimal generation is for the generator to generate 1 watt, the load to consume 1 watt. But this half dollar price is uh, exactly the price at which the generator is indifferent to production or non-production. <laughs> so it meets its cost of production exactly. So, he, he does not care whether he produces or not. So, even if the ISO declares the optimal price half, the generator is indifferent to not producing or producing. So, he may say I am not going to produce, but this guy is saying at price half I am going to buy, but there is no balance. Okay? So, how can the ISO determine the correct pr uh, price and the, actually this is wrong. Even if the ISO knows the correct price, how can it determine the right allocations? Because every time this person is saying half, this person is saying 0 and he is saying 1, never balancing. right? So, there has been some beautiful advances in optimization theory. So, Gustafsson et al. have this paper where they say average your past bids in a weighted average sense. Okay? And this latest work says weighted average with more weight on the recent. Okay? So, you weight according to s to the theta, s is the time and theta is a positive uh, exponent. Okay? Just take a weighted average of previous bids. And then this weighted average will converge to the right allocations. And in this particular example, the prices will converge, the allocations will converge, everything is perfect. Okay. Uh, okay. So, the general result, if you want, is uh, I think I am, uh, I do not know, this is one of these may be carbon tax or something. Okay. Uh, there are, there are some linear constraints and there are some nonlinear constraints and I am even going to relax this balance to some linear constraints uh, and there are some convexity compactness assumptions, but not strict convexity. Okay, convexity compactness assumptions. Under strict convexity, some of those earlier problems of indifference will disappear, okay? but under, compact, under convexity, they do not, but we do not need that and then Slater's condition and then this thing converges for this example. So, in the deterministic case, what is going to have to happen is is uh, the ISO announces a price at a broadcast, a price sequence for over a time interval to everybody, and then everybody replies back with their generations or consumptions. They do not need to disclose to each other. Okay? They just tell the ISO, and then the ISO iterates, 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 doing this weighted averaging, okay? and then it will converge. How long? That is another issue. Okay. Okay, now, let us move to the stochastic case. And I am going to look at the case where everybody has a common uncertainty. 
So let us say I'm in Texas. The temperature of Houston is very important, okay? And that affects essentially all of the consumption, generation, everything. It's a common uncertainty. Let's say everybody can measure the temperature of Houston, but it's uncertain. So the uncertainty now is not indexed by the user, okay? And, but this common uncertainty is observed causally by everybody, okay? And you want to maximize this social welfare where the expectation is taken over this common uncertainty. Okay, now let's, let's just simplify life and this assume that this uncertainty is uh, discrete or even binary. So every day wind is blowing or not blowing, blowing or not blowing. So you start at day zero, day one it's blowing or not blowing, day two it's blowing or not blowing, day three it's blowing or not blowing. So that's the stochastic system. And uh, these are the uncertainties at each time. And a vertex is like a state, okay? Uh, now, we know that stationary policies are optimal. Tree policies are optimal. Tree policies are a little bit finer than stationary because stationary says if you're in this state, the policy depends on the state. St tree may say it not only depends on the state, but how you got there, okay? So, but anyway, it doesn't matter. So, the tree policy is to choose an action for each vertex, okay? So, the optimization problem can then be written as a probability distribution over the nodes of the tree and you want to do balancing. Exa and under the right convexity, convex conca convexity, compactness assumptions, exactly the same thing happens. So now what needs to happen is that at time zero, right at the beginning, uh, the ISO will declare, announce prices for all nodes in this tree. And then everybody will bid for all nodes in the tree. So they'll say if it didn't blow yesterday, the wind and the temperature is high tomorrow, and blah, 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 then it is the consumption. So they have to, they have to tell you for each node, okay, which raises huge complexity issues. Uh, and then, but it only needs to be done in the beginning. In the beginning, at time zero, they need to do it, just once. After that, you just implement, okay, because we're all observing the same uncertainty, which is important. But this is hugely complex. This is exponential large, even in the binary case, let alone the uncountable noise case, okay? But anyway, that is the theoretical result, okay? It converges. Now, let's move to private uncertainties. Things get more complicated, as all of Demos' students know. So, private uncertainties, now, by the way, I'm going to consider the case where every, all uncertainties are independent. I don't want to mix, I can do all that, but let's keep it simple. Let's suppose that everybody has an independent private uncertainty, okay? And <coughs> the goal is to maximize the social welfare now over the product measure, okay? Now, uh, now the same result can be applied, okay? Under some assumptions, let's see what those are. So at time zero, we're sitting out there, uh, Maybe I should uh, first explain this assumption. Let us suppose the ISO knows the labels of the tree. It may not know the semantics. So I could just say uncertainty state X. He may not know that that means wind speed of 35 miles per hour, okay? So the semantics, so there's a label of uncertainties. Now the agents need to know the laws of the labels. Okay, that's the assumption mathematically. Now let me go back and tell you the algorithm. So in that case, we can write down this tree because there's, it's a tree of labels, okay? So then the ISO uh, announces a price for all these uh, labels and people bid and etc. you iterate, okay? You're there. And then at time one, you go there then the wind may blow or depending on what happens to everybody, you end up in a different node. But now I don't know which state you ended up in and you don't know what state I ended up in, right? So we don't know which node we are at. I only know my own uncertainty what happened, right? But that's okay. The, if the labels are known, all right, we can rebid from here, okay? So, so the, and then rebid and so on. So in this particular case, we, the, the agents need to communicate uh, this, okay? But we'll need to uh, keep bidding, but the complexity is <laughs> no less, okay? It is still horrible, exponential complexity. 
Okay, so the question is, is there any way where the solution could be made as tractable as it is in the deterministic case, where there was no complexity, but just time, just bidding time sequences. And it turns out that that is true in the LQG case. Okay? Now, I asked my colleague uh, LQG, is it okay? Pass is easy. Yeah, we use LQG, a linear systems all the time and so on. Now, we get into a modeling situation. To what extent can we model things as linear? Uh, to what extent can you model constraints as quadratics with high cost? To what extent can you model noise as Gaussian? That is a separate thing. I am telling you a theoretical result, but, uh, but, uh, but there may be some uh, possibility. Okay, so we're going to talk of multiple linear quadratic Gaussian systems. Which, by the way, if you if you don't have this notion of price and all this, then you can get into this Witzenhausen domain, right? Witzenhausen showed that if you don't know or don't have memory, then the whole problem is intractable, correct? So if what I'm doing affects you, but you don't know what I did, then the problem is intractable, even in a simple two-stage setting, right? Here, that is certainly true in spades because you have so many generators all with their private states and so on. Okay. So, it is assumed that we have a bunch of LQG systems, standard assumptions, okay, all the post positive definiteness of the cost function and then you want to maximize the sum of all these quadratics. Okay. Now, the solution because of certainty equivalence this thing completely collapses. The bidding procedure simplifies completely and in fact, the following result is optimal. At each time, not in the big, so in a deterministic setting, I have to do this bid price iteration only once in the beginning at time 0 and I have to repeat at each time. Okay? So, at each time, I do a sequence of bids okay? and the sequence of bids are, I bid, I announce prices for all future for all future times and that is adjusted simply based on uh, driving the excess consumption towards 0. And the generators or loads respond with the optimal solution. They also have to respond with a sequence, not a stochastic process. So, this price is not a stochastic process now. I mean, it is stochastic process because the state was random, but conditionally it is deterministic. Okay? And these guys are also conditionally deterministic. They need to solve only the deterministic linear quadratic problem. There is no noise. Okay, there is no expectation. There is a quadratic function plus the cost of uh, price, which is linear, cost of energy, which is linear. And we need to do an adequate number of iterations at each stage to converge, which is the Moses point. How long does it, does it take? Okay. So, the solution then is the following. Uh, at time t, this ISO announces future prices from t to capital T to everybody broadcast. These all respond back with generations consumptions and you keep iterating that and so on. Now, this theory can be extended to include other linear constraints. There is no hassle. Every linear constraint has a Lagrange multiplier, which you can think of as locational marginal prices or whatever. So, for example, if you have DC power flow equations, which is basically an approximation, which is linear. okay. Uh, you can incorporate that. So, you can take into account the Kirchhoff's uh, laws, if you will, of transmission and so on or approximations of that and so on. So, we can incorporate uh, linear constraints and so on. Okay, so, how should I evaluate this and this is where uh, I am confused. Okay. So, let me start with the simple question. For, with 15 minute intervals, is such an iterative bidding feasible? Okay, let us say that we are bidding 15 minutes ahead. Can we carry out this determinant quickly? Uh, if it is reasonable number of iterations, may be feasible with the communication computation infrastructure, maybe with 5G. <laughs> okay. All right. Now, uh, now question of uh, price exploration. Okay. Or actually, generation consumption exploration. Because even if I know the correct prices, ISO will have to explore to determine the right allocations. Okay. So, something like this Gustafsson is needed. Okay. Uh, is that the minimal amount needed? I do not know. Okay. Now, the thing is that once you announce prices, you are already leaking some information about each other, right? but that is unavoidable. 
and price exploration may leak further information. Okay. Now, question is there a better alternative to get to optimal social welfare? Okay. I don't know. Why should we get to social welfare? I don't know. Okay. Uh, now, leakage of information? I don't know. Okay. Now, I want to address this question that Praveen is raising. Maybe I'm using a different adjective. Now, here I'm assuming implicitly that everybody is a price taker. That is, once I tell the price, at each stage they take that to be the truth, <laughs> that will be the price, and respond honestly with their bids, right? So they're price takers. Now, but what, why, should, why can they lie? Or to put it another way, they can even uh, respond back by optimizing over a different sigma algebra or something like that, you know? So I, I'm going to lump all of that as uh, strategic considerations where, or uh, they're doing something, whatever price you're, but you know, I'm, if, if I tell you that if I fix the price, right, and I tell you that I'm going to hold you to the allocation that you've bid for, then it's not clear why you'd want to lie, okay? So uh, this is still ongoing work, okay? The strategic aspect, but here's the thought. Imagine there are two, just one generator, one consumption, one consumer, okay? And uh, what incentive is there for the load to lie? Well, let's assume that the generator is telling the truth. So think initially of a Nash equilibrium context. Generator is telling the truth. Should the load lie? Now, supposing the load lies and it converges to a price lesser than the correct price. The only way it could converge to price lesser than the correct price is if the load has underbid. But now, in the ISO context, the ISO is going to hold the load to that consumption. Therefore, the net effect will be that the load will be buying a reduced amount of price of power at a reduced price, and that doesn't benefit it. Okay, so I don't know. So I'm wondering whether this can be extended in a larger. By the way, and this uh, this Nash equilibrium can also you can uh, make it for every group of agents under some convexity assumptions. So, so maybe there may be some way of approaching the strategic thing. I don't know, okay? Uh, of course, and by the way, this is just, uh, <laughs> there are many economic and power issues, line limits, line losses, uh, equations, security constraint, OP, and so on. Okay, so that's all I want to say. And I w just wanted to wish uh, uh, Demos and Barbara all the best in the coming years and decades. Thank you. Let me point out, the problem that needs to be solved for decentralized control and how that differs from the classical information theory. The channel that we will have has memory and dynamics.